Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of fun crafts for you today and I'm joining in with one of the sweetest people on this planet. I've joined in with her before so it's so exciting to be able to do this again with her. I'll explain that a little bit later. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. So today we're going to work on some fun and easy DIY farmhouse Christmas decor pieces. Let's get started with project number one. For this project, you're going to need two pieces of 8x8 fabric. Now, this is just kind of like a really thick kind of off-white duck cloth fabric. It's by Waverly Brand at Walmart. Again, 8x8. I'm going to take one of these pieces. I'm going to fold it in half. Now, I have my iron here hot and ready for later on in this project. You don't have to do this part. I just ironed it in half to give me a more definitive line so that I could see it better to cut one piece in half. And then I've got two pieces of fabric here. Both of these are found at Walmart. I've used both of these on this project before. You'll see it in the end staging when I show an assortment of all of these. I'm going to use this one here. Now it's pretty thin, so I'm actually going to cut two of this. But if you have the thicker fabric, you just need to cut one. And I'm going to use that half a piece of fabric that we cut off. And I'm going to use that for my pattern to trace and cut out of this fabric. Now for this project you can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue which I'll be using throughout the projects today or you can use hot glue of course I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine but you're gonna take your uh, piece of decorative fabric and lay it on top of your other piece of fabric and you're just going to use your glue hot glue or Fabri-Tac and just hot glue one side. Here I am sewing machine and I'm just sewing down one long side. Here it is all together and I'm just going to take my iron here and just kind of iron it nice and flat. Now for this project I am using my Cricut Explore Air machine here. I have all the fonts listed down below in my description box but if you don't have that Walmart has these permanent black fabric markers. They're like two dollars for a package and you can just write it on yourself. So here it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this ironed on. Now this is Crash Mounty and Bochella for the fonts. Free from Defont.com is what I use for this. Once that's ready, it's still warm. I can peel this off warm and it's ready to go. Now, what I'm going to also do around both pieces of fabric is I'm going to fray the edges and I'm just going to pull along the edges and pull up pieces of that fabric to kind of fray. You can just pull up the strings here and it just gives it a nice farmhouse look because I am going to leave the edges out except for the first one where we sewed the two in half. The remaining of this project, the edges are all going to be out and exposed. It's easier, it's cute, it's farmhouse, it's rustic. Here's kind of what it looks like here. Now since we sewed these two pieces together, it took up some of our fabric. So as you see as I lay it on the original piece that was 8x8, eight eight, there's about a half inch left at the top. So just lay that top piece on there and then trim that bottom piece so it's now again the same size and then make sure you if you want to fray your edges you go ahead and you know fray your edges on the piece you just cut. Now it's ready to put together both the same size and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little pin right here. Yes we're making a cute little mini was eight by eight now seven and a half inch pillow. Little pin here so remind myself I don't sew that spot so either Fabri-Tac or hot glue gun you'll go around the edge here up top and down the long side leaving that one little opening about three inches and I'm going to take mine as I said sewing machine here and sew all the way around leaving that about three inch opening. This is so cute and when you have like a bunch of them, oh, it's adorable. Made these for a craft show, they all sold out. And then of course I'm stuffing it here. You're going to stuff your little pillow as good as you want it or as full as you want it. You can see my distress here. I think that's super cute leaving the edges out. We're just going to add a little decoration in the center. I found these cute little mini ornaments at Dollar Tree, $1.98. And since my thing says gingerbread wishes, I thought these looked like little gingerbread houses. So I'm going to use them. Got some red and white twine here here and a little jingle bell along with a safety pin tiny safety pin really easy I've got some beads here as well now you can get these beads at Walmart 
and I'll show you that down the road here in a little bit. I'm just stringing uh, two on each end of my ribbon here and I'll set it aside. What we need to do is close this opening. So your hot glue or your Beacon Fabri-Tac or of course your sewing machine. It's all closed up, ready to go. Oh, so cute. And then I'm gonna go back to my ribbon here. I'm gonna tie it into a little bow or my ribbon, my twine, I guess. Get it the loops as big as I want and then I'm gonna tie a little knot at the end of the bead so you don't fall off and cut off the excess of both sides. And I often will leave one side a little bit longer than the other just to give it a little bit of character. Cut off that excess. And then I'm gonna take this little gingerbread house, so to speak, I'm leaving the string that's already on there because I'm gonna tie it around the center of my bow, just like that. And then I'm gonna add the safety pin and the bell right you know, over the center of that. And then I will glue that on kind of right in the center of that decorative fabric. Oh, I just love how these turned out. Love, love, love. And then off camera, I've got this spray glitter. It's kind of like a glitter and sealer in one. I get it at Walmart in a craft section, about $7 a bottle. Once I spray that and it's dry, this project is complete. Before we move on to project number two, I'm super excited to be sharing that I'm teaming up with my sweet friend Tracy, who is Country Charm by Tracy here on YouTube. Now we have teamed up together before, but it's been a while, but we finally got our calendars synced. Now her channel name is appropriately named Country Charm by Tracy, which just totally describes her artwork exactly. It's a little bit country, a little bit rustic. It has such charm to it. Every project is just adorable. Her style is just close to my heart. We share a love of pit berries when we do our projects and she is just the sweetest soul on the planet. Make sure that you definitely check out her video and all the DIY Christmas inspiration she has come up with. I will have that video in my description box as well as to just the main uh, link to her main channel page. It's fabulous. You won't want to miss a thing. Let her know I sent you. If this is your first time that you're going to be seeing Tracy and her work, you're going to want to hit her red subscribe button. Thank you for Tracy for joining me. Now let's move on to project number two. And here we go. Moving on with project number two. So for this project, we're going to be using this scarf from Dollar Tree, as well as a couple more of these little clips from Dollar Tree. And then some wood stickers. I ended up using snowflakes. They have different ones in different packs. Some, a little bit of greenery, whatever you have on hand. Some of these pit berries. This is my last of these glittery pit berries from Hobby Lobby. And some of these beaded berries I love from Hobby Lobby. And then also some of these beads. Now this is what I was gonna talk about in the first project. I get these beads at Walmart in the mini ornament section. They had a couple different colors this year. Some ribbon you want, I ended up going with the Merry Christmas and then some twine and either, I'm using the black kind of ropey stuff, but you know, twine. And then I just free handed a mitten here, two pieces, bottom and the cuff. And this bottom mitten is about seven and a half inches in length. And then from the thumb across, it's about six and a half inches in the width. And then the top is about two and a half by five. But you know, so there you go. So cut four of the bottom, four of the top. An option for the top, I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. Now you could use stuffing or you can cut an extra piece, but just cut it a little bit smaller um, inside. Now, looking back at it, I wished I would have probably stuffed it because it wasn't as thick as I wanted to be. That piece in the center, I just cut it so that I could have a really thick looking cuff. But again, 
not as thick as I wanted it. So maybe I either would have cut two or three or stuffed it. So I'm just pinning my little pattern to my scarf and I will cut out my uh, four pieces. I've got my scarf doubled over here. So I'll cut this twice, of course, end up with four pieces. So you can have a right and left facing mitt here. Great fleece scarf works perfectly. Here's our two sides. Again, you can use Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue. I try to make my projects like this so that, um, you know, there's all sorts of options to do this. If you're not a sewer, you want to go all the way around the thumb area to the top, but leave that top portion open. Again, I will take mine to the sewing machine. And I sew mine in probably about a half inch for those of you that are sewers, just to leave that nice rough kind of raw edge again. I'm leaving that edge out. I think it looks a little more rustic. And here's my top completely open. Off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff both of my mittens here just to save us a little time. You know how to stuff, right? And we're gonna go ahead and start adding our cuffs. Now I chose this black corded string, uh, which I get at Walmart in the gift wrapping section at Christmas. So what we're gonna do is um, get, I want these two mittens to be hooked together. So we're gonna kind of glue in that string there and you can use just plain twine here and then add the back cuff and I've got it about a half inch down on the top of my mitten. And then you'll add the top piece on top of that. Okay, so if you're a hot gluer or a glue gun, go ahead and do all that. I'm gonna go ahead and glue in my little cord here and then I'm gonna glue just a little bit because I'm gonna sew around this. So I'm just kind of gluing the center together for me because I'm gonna sew. But if you're hot gluing or Beacon Fabri-Tac, glue the whole thing all around the edges completely together. And then I'm adding my little uh, extra piece in here. And again, I probably either would have stuffed it or maybe added like three thicknesses of like felt here. It's just a piece of felt. It just wasn't quite thick enough, but you know, it is what it is. It turned out I'm okay with it. So I'm just kind of gluing that center on there and then gluing, just kind of laying that down on top, kind of hold it together a little bit in the center for me, add a little pin so it's easier to sew. That's all I'm doing here. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. Add the cord in, get the bottom in of the cuff and the top part of the cuff and get it all together so I can take it to the sewing machine and, and I'll just sew that off camera. And you don't have to do this part. If you don't really care about your cuff being a little bit thicker, you could leave out the extra little piece. And again, this is just felt. Now this is felt from Walmart. It comes on a bolt. You could use the Dollar Tree felt, but you know I wanted mine just a little bit thicker uh, felt. So that's what I'm using here, right? So I've got it all sewn here. It is together in a piece. We're gonna start decorating here. This is the ribbon I chose, the Merry Christmas. I've got two bows here and then I've got some twine. I'm doing two bows. Gonna be the same for both sides. Here's my little uh, thing here. So you could use the metallic marker or of course I did mine with my Cricut. So one mitten is gonna say jingle and the other mitten is gonna say all the way. And for jingle, I use smack over and for all the way, it's called DK Lemon Yellow, both from defont.com. Again, you can use that uh, metallic marker. I like the metallic marker best from Dollar Tree because it's a little bit bolder. The ink is a little brighter and bolder because I know they have several different pens you can use. And then I'm leaving the clip on this. I'm just adding some glue on the inside and I'm clipping it around the twine bow and the other ribbon. I've got some snowflakes here out of my supply, but you could use the Dollar Tree snowflakes, of course. I thought I had more than one and I didn't, I didn't have enough. So I'm just using some different snowflakes out of my supply and adding a couple of beads here underneath. I forgot to add in my pit berries, but no worries. The, the glue takes about a minute to set up that Fabri-Tac. So I've got some time to shove that glue in when I realized, oh my gosh, I forgot to put the pit berries in. <laughs> So doing just like we did on the first project, adding the snowflake, the beads, tying, getting them down to the length I want, tying a little knot and cutting off the excess. Perfect. And then I'm gonna start adding in the greenery. My pit berries are still not in yet. I add two, three different kinds of greenery here. Greenery from Dollar Tree works perfectly. And what I do on this side for the greenery and stuff and the berries, here comes my pit berries. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to get it in there. So I gotta quickly open the clip and shove that in. 
but I got it in plenty of time. So the greenery, back to my project, and the berries here I'm using. Whatever I do on this side, I will flip it on the other side for the other cuff. So I've got on this side, I've got the greenery on the right and these little bead of berries on the left. And adding in a little uh, jingle bell, the red bells you can get from Dollar Tree. I like those because they're rustic, the red and green ones. And so, oh yes, little kitty tail here, she's coming into play. So then on this side, my greenery is on the left and my bead of berries are on the right. She's just decided to join me today. You'll see her all over in my <laughs> craft space here. And here comes a kitty crossing. <laughs> little interruption. Getting my greenery glued on here. Again, opposite from the other side. And once more, here she comes. <laughs> and then she'll finally take a break here to the left and sit down. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and add in my little ensemble here, exact same as the other side. The ribbon, the bow twine with the snowflakes in that, and the little beaded pit berries. And then I've got that glued on. I'm adding in my berries at the right my bell to the left and of course I'm going to spray everything with that glitter spray and that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, numbers three, four, and five. So for this one, we're going to use this little uh, wood truck you get from Dollar Tree. It had a little bead on top, so I took that off. And then again, we're using these uh, little clothespin clip things. I took the back off of it, and we're going to use one of these little mini trees from Dollar Tree, those you know set of trees, and take the little bottom off. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Rustic Red, Caviar, and then just some Waverly chalk paints, like a grayish silvery type of color. And then we'll use some uh, sanding block from Dollar Tree. And then, of course, I made a little thing off my Cricut. You could use a metallic marker once again. DK Lemon Yellow. <laughs> DK Lemon Yellow on the font. And we're just going to paint the truck in red. A couple of coats. I've taped off, and we're going to paint the wheels in black. Moving right along. And then I kind of drew the inner circles of my truck wheels here. Just paint that in that kind of silvery gray. It doesn't have to be fancy or neat because we're going to sand it anyway and make it all rustic. And then I need to drill a hole here right in the top because we want to be able to hang our strings so it can become an ornament. Sand it all up so it gets all nice and rustic and it will hide any of our painting flaws. I love how these turned out. Sold really well at the craft show. So this one's for myself. <laughs> Here's what it looks like all sanded up. Super rustic and cute. And then I'll go ahead and also sand this little uh, sign here as well. And here I just made it up. It says Mary Tree Farm. And again, reminding you, you can use the metallic marker. I will use that in an uh, upcoming one here. I will actually use it, I promise. <laughs> get that on. And before I get that on, I've got just some white uh, Waverly chalk paint here. Water down with water. My fan brush. This is how I like to add my splatters. I'm going to splatter front and back of the truck. And then I'm bending my tree a little bit, and I'm going to give it a little haircut because we want it to fit in the bed. We want, you know, this little car ornament or maybe it's a truck look like a truck so this is what it would look like 
So you want to trim it down and the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue holds just fine. Get it on there. I just hold it on for about a minute or so. And then to make it look cute, give a little design. I've got a nice thick chunky piece of twine here. You can get those little balls of twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to just tie it around and into a little bow here on the side. Not much decoration. So I like it how it is, kind of rustic by itself. And I'm going to glue on this, you know, Merry Tree Farm sign. Before I get that on there, I'm going to add some red and white twine for the hanger through the little hole we drilled. And then we'll get this on there. And you know what's coming. <laughs> Once that's done, I will, of course, use my spray glitter. So let's move on to the next project, number four. Remember back, I don't know when it was, September or so, I did a Dollar Tree haul, and I told you all if you are there and you go shopping and you see this, make sure you pick these up. I'm going to be using it. If you didn't get this, you could totally use like foam board from Dollar Tree and draw these shapes nice and easy. I took the paper and everything off of the back of both of these. So on this one, I'll just be using a white chalk paint. It's called mud paint new chalk paint I get and in Dixie Belle in the color caviar and so on the hat shape I'm just going to paint on the back and then around the perimeter on the front and then I'll do the other one off camera I'll paint the back in white and then around the perimeter on the front in white as well Okay, and then when both of these are done, what I did is I traced around each of the pieces. So on this one, I traced around and about a quarter inch in, I redrew the perimeter. And then on this hat, I did the same thing, but I did it twice. So I had a kind of a bigger piece and a smaller piece because I wanted a little bit of the wood of the perimeter of both of these ornaments to show. So let's start with the hat here. What I've got is here's my fabric. Use the same fabric as on the first project and then a little piece of felt here and I'm just gluing the felt down in the center of the hat. Okay, we kind of go back and forth on these ornaments a little bit and then we'll then we'll finish. Kind of write it first back and forth. So on the snowman, this is going to be a snowman, I cut two pieces. Now I sewed mine together just to keep it together, but you don't have to. You can just glue your two pieces of felt together. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. Now when I glue this down, I don't just lay it there, okay? I want it to kind of look puffed up in the center. So as you see as I'm doing this, I'm pressing around the edges and I'm kind of pressing inward toward the center. So it kind of gives a little lip here and it makes it look puffed up in the center, okay? I just think it gives a little bit more definition, a little more 3D look. So this is what it looks like, nice and easy. And then on the hat, because I was using fabric on top and I had to use a piece of felt in the middle, um, that's going to give us our definition. And I made the felt smaller so that when we put this on, you, you can push the top fabric, kind of push it in and up against the smaller size of that felt that's in the center. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why that felt's a little bit smaller. So you can push the fabric right up to it and give it kind of a 3D look. Okay, and you don't have to do this. You could just lay down everything flat if you want. So let's go on the hat and let's decorate. I've got this ribbon here. It's what I'm going to be using. One of these signs that I took the back off. And you can see I've already penciled in my writing. And I cut the edge off of that ribbon because it was a little too wide. Going to use my beaded berries and some of my beaded pit berries, which the strand that I have left is getting shorter and shorter. Couple of little small uh, pine cones from Dollar Tree. Get those bag of pine cones, some greenery, some wood snowflakes, some of these beads again. I showed you before. You can get those from Walmart. Some twine here already in a bow. And then back to our metallic marker. So I'm going ahead and gluing the ribbon down, tied into a bow here. And all of these decor pieces, if you've noticed, they're pretty much the same through all three projects. You don't have to have like a bunch of different pieces. You notice all of our uh, projects here today look totally different, but we're using almost all the same supplies. So I'm typing or typing, writing on here, let it snow. And I do it about three times to get it nice and bright. Okay, and then taking my uh, twine here and doing the same thing as we've done all throughout today's projects, adding my, you know, wood snowflakes and beads here, and then tie a knot at the end, cut off the excess. Do it on both sides. 
and then gluing my sign down. We're gonna set that aside. I'm gonna add my pit berries first. Gonna make a cute little rustic frosty hat here. Then we're gonna go ahead and glue down our twine bow with our cute little things hanging. I decide to turn it around, glue the twine down first and then the pit berries on top and then glue the little let it snow sign right over the top of that. And then we're just gonna glue in our cute little beaded berries, just like we did on the mittens, a little bit of greenery off to the side. Couple little pine cones in the center, just kind of going around that let it that little snow sign will kind of tip up a little bit. It'll kind of be uh, tip up at the top a little bit, but you know you don't really see it. Um, so it's kind of slanted, I guess what I want to say. And then here's where I'm gonna kind of you know tie my twine and stuff here, let it hang one longer than the other because that's the way I like it. Oh, and you guessed it. Uh huh. Here comes the sealer. I do all of this on camera, off camera. You'll see what it all looks like in the in the end where it looks all pretty um, glittery up. And then I'm using my crocodile here and I'm punching the hole that was already in the top of that uh, ornament. So we need to get our you know twine here so we can hang this up, right? And then we'll go ahead and move on to our snowman. So we're ready here. Bringing in some of these pom poms from Dollar Tree. I've got just some, um, I had to make some eyes and nose, and this is just Crayola um, air dry clay I get from Walmart. So here's my little eyes and nose I, you know, rolled up and made, nice and easy. And then red twine you get from Dollar Tree, added my beads here. Nothing else is on there yet, but I mean, I haven't, you know, tied the knots. Couple three uh, wood buttons here for my supply. And then some black curly wire. You can get curly wire from Dollar Tree, of course. And I'm just using tweezers. These eyes and nose are so tiny. Using tweezers to paint my eyes black, of course. And my nose will be orange, of course. And I made my nose a little bit crookedy. Decided to add some snowflakes onto here. That's why I hadn't tied it yet. I was trying to decide if I wanted to add some snowflakes or just beads. So now I've got that on there. I'll do that same routine again. Get those on there and tie them off and cut off the excess. Don't want our beads falling off, right? Gonna punch my hole with my crocodile here. Thought I better do that first before we start gluing stuff on or turn it over to put our little hanger in and it'll all fall right back off, right? <laughs> Perfect. And then glue my buttons on. And I pick some ribbon here to tie another little bow, kind of for like a little bow tie. It's a black and red check. You can see it laying down there. Here we are gonna glue it on right above that top button. And I've got a little bell and safety pin. I'm going to um, attach this to the red twine and the bow at the same time. I don't have to glue it on. Our safety pin's gonna attach it all together here. And then we're gonna glue on the teeny tiny that I have to grab my tweezers again, little eyes and nose. I'm putting my eyes together and kind of slanted because I think it looks cute. The nose slanted up, of course. Get that on there. And then my little wire I curlied and then the ends are straight so we can glue that on. So, you know, we have earmuffs, right? So we're gonna kind of glue that onto the side Super cute. And we're gonna glue down our little red pom-poms for this one. And then we'll go ahead, of course, and get the other one glued on. And of course, you know I am going to use my spray glitter off camera. Now I love this spray glitter because it's clear with silver glitter, so it's not overall silver. So let's take a look at just this one, the transformation from the before to the after. I think it turned out so great, so super cute. But with that said, these projects are complete. So I hope you enjoyed the projects I came up with today. They're very easy. They're fun to do. They make great decor if you need a quick gift for somebody. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. 
please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel or you're coming over from Tracy's channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here with me today. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any more videos from me. Tracy, thank you again. I'm so glad we got to sync up our calendars. I love teaming up with you and sharing all this inspiration. I hope we can do it again soon. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Are you letting Jesus be your steering wheel or are you trying to steer it yourself? How's it been going so far? Do you find that there keeps being obstacles in the road? Do you keep following the wrong directions, trusting in the wrong GPS, ending up at the wrong place at the wrong time? So here's the question. Are you willing to let Jesus take your steering wheel and drive you to your destination? Are you willing to trust that he knows the perfect road to get you to where you need to go on time? I promise he won't crash your car, take you to the wrong place, drive you into a cliff. Trust that there is peace in that. I bet that if he has taken the wheel before, he kept you safe, right? So why are you trying to steer the wheel this time? It's exhausting to try and do it on your own. Let him drive. Take a breath. Get out of the car. Walk around to the other side open the door and get in the passenger seat. Give the wheel over to him and trust that he is faithful and that he will do it again. Let him take the wheel. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.